Hello everyone and welcome to the Ethical Hiking and Penetration Testing course. My name is Armin Avakian and today I'm going to take you a tour in the attack called Man in the Middle Attack. Uh, in previous workshop, uh, I've conducted a three-hour workshop which was about a basic about ethical hacking and penetration testing where we have talked about how people can perform social engineering, uh, exploit, exploiting the vulnerabilities by finding them through Metasolid and, and many more attacks. But today I would like to only give my all information and my all time about man in the middle attack because it's a very powerful and very, very specific topic which needs an, another hour to talk about. And uh, let's start from a basic diagram and theory to understand what man in the middle attack itself is. So let's imagine uh, uh, this uh, this network diagram. So usually, when a user doesn't matter what kind of device it uses, either it's a device, uh, any device, mobile device, or a personal computer, laptop, doesn't matter. Anytime you try to connect to the internet and browse a specific website, let's say google.com or yahoo.com, what first happens? You type the website URL, the uh, the name of the website, the domain, and as soon as you type the uh, domain and press enter, your link goes to the router, and the router has a specific sp uh, specific service called um, domain name server, which basically takes the name you have entered already and converts it to an IP address. And the IP address goes to the uh, specific server. So let's say I'm at the server and uh, I have the number 1234. So what does router do? By jumping on other ro routers, it goes until it finds the server with the number 1234 because uh, let's say google.com has the IP address of 1234 but in reality if you want to check uh, check the specific address a uh, uh, specific IP address of uh, ser uh, some server or on a domain you can go to uh, your command con uh, co command prompt where you type your commands basically CMD you press enter then here you write the command called ping and the name of the website you are trying to get the IP address of. So let's say I'm trying to get the IP address of google.com. So I will just ping google.com. And I can see I'm getting a reply from the, uh, this IP address. Hence, it means the Google server is stored in this IP address. Let me close it. Okay, so why I'm telling you this? Uh, so you basically understood the process of the communication, the server from there replies, oh yes, take my HTML, CSS and JavaScript, I have fun with it, look at it. So the device receives back from the router the HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So what does the man in the middle attack do? As the name suggests, the person becomes man in the middle. And where is the middle where you, you will probably... The middle is between the router and the device. So we can assume that the hacker will be somewhere near here or here, doesn't matter, any place that is between the wireless router and the device. So basically what the man in the middle attack does, it starts to analyze the traffic between the device and the wireless router. So in, if we talk in a more common sense, uh, the things that can happen uh, in real life, you can assume that uh, two persons are talking to each other and let's assume that the first person is the device and the second uh, person is the router and they are talking something about the life or sharing some secrets or talking about they're talking about something and the third person who is the hacker comes and stands near them but they cannot notice them and start starts to conversation basically is drop them and uh, he starts to analyze the conversation they are talking uh, they're making and and trying to get the information that is valuable for the hacker for the third person so this scenario that i just said in real life basically happens in the virtual world 
So I will show you another diagram, uh, which I think will be more clear for you. So, okay, let me maximize it a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this is our mobile device running app and it's trying to connect to the wireless router. For data, receiving some data, uh, sending pictures to the endpoint of some other mobile app device and the router is message and we can see that there is someone that intercepts the traffic and gets the data from the flow see the packet is going through air right and if someone has connection to the network he or she can perform that same uh, sending and receiving hence it can listen so in words maybe it sounds a little bit simple and complicated but uh, i'm showing you that uh, as soon as you uh, go deeper with me you will understand that things are much more easier than you think so uh, what happens basically when there is uh, by the way the, this attack can be only performed in the network you are connected to so it's not like someone can from australia perform the man in the middle attack in let's say united arab emirates it only happens as soon as you are connected to the same network so uh, if you you and the hacker are connected to the same network uh, it's very probable that the probability is very high that uh, you can be hacked by man in the middle attack if you didn't perform the enough security measures so as you can see from the diagram what the hacker the red box uh, or red phone server whatever you want to call it is uh, the red box is the hacker and what is it doing it's telling the router it's telling the router that oh you know what i'm the mobile phone and is, uh, how is it doing it the router communicates with the devices using mac addresses so if i have the mac address one two three four uh, one time I let's say I go and sleep and someone else comes tells me tells the, uh, me oh you know my my name is one two three four and the router will think okay if you are the one two three four there is a message for you and it gives the message to the so let's say I have an email address of rman at gmail.com and uh, when the someone sends an email to me he's uh, he or she sends the email on to rman at gmail.com right and the email address arm at gmail so the gmail server will basically say oh what there is an issue there is two armands at gmail.com what the router will do a router will basically send the packet either to one of them or both of them but and the problem is there cannot be the same two IP addresses at the same time. The router will be set to one of the more active network of obviously, which is uh, managing the traffic all the time. And what the hacker will tell the mobile de device that you know what, I am the router. So basically, the hacker will confuse both the router and both the mobile devices that you know what, for mobile device, I am the router. For the router, I'm so so all the traffic will be basically between the mobile device so there will be no endpoint anymore there will be no router and mobile device communication there will be mobile device hacker router router mobile uh, router hacker. so this is basically the theory part of the uh, how the man in the middle attack performed and after becoming the man in the middle attack Right now, the hacker can basically see any traffic you are sending or receiving. So any packets you send, doesn't matter. It's a message, it's, an, it's an, uh, some attachment, some document, email, whatever. If the hacker is man in the middle, performing man in the middle attack, and he or she is already man in the middle in the network, he, he or she can already see everything that is passing through the network. If this diagram didn't make you so much clear, uh, I will make one for you so it will be more clear. Let's say uh, this is the mobile phone. Sorry for my bad drawing. <laughs> 
So let's make it more <laughs> readable. It's a mobile phone. Yeah, something like this. Okay. So yeah, and let's say this is the router, right? So uh, let's make route more <laughs> router-like. So it's basically <laughs> horrible. Then and the man in the middle attack basically stands right here. This is the device the, or the computer uh, of the hacker. So basically, the hacker becomes the hacker between them. So all traffic has a true. If I send it back and it goes through the hacker, and if I send from the router to the mobile device, it again passes through the hacker. So uh so by now you have to have the foundation to understand what's the man in the middle attack itself and now we can already start to prepare the environment but before uh, going to it i would like to mention few very important things uh, the first one is that the crash course is highly based on educational purposes so the things we teach here we have no uh, illegal purposes to do so and we highly recommend and uh, kind of re uh, advise that never ever uh, do the man in the middle attack or other attacks uh, on the devices computers phones that you have no authority to do so as you saw from the uh, theory part it says that the uh, man in the middle attack can be performed on any device that is connected to the internet so please be extra careful and for, th for that purpose we are going to create a virtual environment in a uh, virtual box which we will talk a little bit later where we can perform at our attacks uh, without any uh, issues and illegal thing so in order to start to prepare our environment we have to download a a software called VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a software that allows you to install virtual machines on it. Virtual machine is basically a uh, computer uh, inside in a computer, a virtual machine. Machine we refer to the computer itself, uh, the operation system in other words. So let's say if you want to work with a Mac operation system or Linux operation system, it's it's not necessary for you to uh, un uninstall your Windows or Mac OS and install the Linux. You can directly uh, download the virtual box and just basically install the virtual machine on it. So what we are going to do now, we are going to download the virtual box after downloading the virtual box we are going to download a Windows 7 and the Kali Linux operation system Windows 7 everyone I hope already knows what Windows 7 is it's an operation system made from Microsoft we are going to perform the man in the middle attack on the Windows 7 which is going to be our victim we could choose any operation system it's not strictly or it's not only working on windows 7 it works on any anything as i said that is connected to the internet but for fast results and simplicity let's start with windows 7 and kali linux of course highly preferred operation system uh, by hackers uh, it's a uh, Linux based operation system. The difference between Kali Linux and Linux is just that the Linux has already pre installed all tools on it. Not necessarily all, but uh, let's say at least all dependencies that we need. So, why is Kali Linux so uh, preferable compared to other operation systems? Why we are not using, let's say, Windows 10 to attack a Windows 7? We are going to use Kali Linux because some, uh, most of actually the software scripts and hacking tools that we are going to use. Uh, require some dependencies. So let's say you know, there is an uh, application that is written on a Python and in order to run that Python script there is uh, many uh, libraries that needed to in order to run that application in Kali Linux. The best thing about the Kali Linux the things that usually are required are already pre-installed and if even if they are not installed they are very easy to install compared to let's say Mac OS or Windows. Uh, Windows operation systems. So okay, so let's not talk too much about the, these things and write uh, forward the download part. So we will go to Google 
write VirtualBox, uh, go to the VirtualBox website, and straight from there, you can see there is uh, there is in the, in the left uh, left bar, you can see uh, the third row that there is a written downloads. You go for the downloads and uh, choose your operation system and install. The installation is very basic. There is, let's say in other words, you just need to click several times next and that's it, it's installed. Yeah, so this is the virtual box we are talking about. Uh, we could use VMware, but you, you can use VMware if you are familiar with it and you know how to use, but I personally prefer virtual box when I'm teaching because it's more easy to set up. Yes, so after installation of the virtual box, we will go to the Google uh, and search already for the Windows 7. The download link of the Windows 7 will be uploaded in the requirements list, uh, but if you find a hard time to download it from, for some reasons, you will go to the Google, you will write Windows 7 download, and the best word we know is free. Yeah. We go to the, f not first, of course. Uh, yeah, softlay.net, we'll go from there. We'll scroll down a little bit and there, and we are interested in the 64-bit version of the Windows 7. So we'll just click download and it will, after some time, it will directly download <coughs> the Windows 7. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so after that, uh, we are going to do our next step. <coughs> Uh, already, uh, you ha you should have already installed the virtual box. So I I, I have already installed. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to go through the steps how to install virtual box. You can find it anywhere, and it's very easy. So you will double click on the virtual box. For you, uh, as soon as you open, it may request you some um, agreement, and you have to agree with it. Uh, some legal stuff, and after that, you are going to click on the new. You, you, here, by the way, there will be empty for you. There will be no virtual machines for me, but, but the Kali Linux already installed for me. But don't worry, we'll go everything from scratch again. So you click new in order to install a new virtual machine. So our new virtual machine is going to be a Windows 7. So the name, of course, is going to be, let's say, Wind 7. You can name it uh, whatever you want. And the type, it, uh, it's a very cool feature that uh, makes the environment more adaptable to the operation, uh, virtual machine you are going to install on. So by default, it already selected for me Microsoft Windows or Windows 7, but it's a very flexible. Let's say you have you want to install a Linux operation system. If you type the name Linux, it will automatically change for you. So if I type Windows, it will change for me. So let's leave it as a Windows 7. Yeah, so you click next, then you allocate how much uh, random access memory you want to uh, provide to the virtual machine you are going to use. So let's say uh, 3000 something is pretty enough for it. So we click next, then uh, create hard, uh, virtual hard disk. This is how much memory we want to keep for the virtual machine we are going to use. So create. Uh, VDI, yes, because we are going to use a uh, disk image, yes, next, uh, dynamically allocated, yes, because uh, let's say if 32 gigabytes of hard drive is not enough, it will not just crash, it will dynamically allocate, <coughs> sorry, dynamically allocate a uh, hard drive space from the host to the virtual machine. So again, okay, next, uh, create, yeah, just the final confirmation, and that's it. We have the virtual machine already set, and the only thing is left is the installation. Actually, the space for installation is already ready, so we click start. Yes, and here it asks for the ISO file that we have already downloaded. So you will click on the small folder here with the arrow, yeah, and add. So as I have downloaded it already, it uh, for me, oops, we lost, yeah, it's for me, it's here. So so you just go to the destination where you have downloaded the ISO file, the Windows 7, and you click on it, choose, start. 
And that's it. Now the basic Windows 7 installation will start. It will start in a way that, let's say, you how you will format your hard drive and install a new operational system. So imagine you are starting from the boot by BIOS. So that's that's how it's going to work now. So it's starting the Windows. It asking you for you the basic steps. So the installation is very easy. You click next. You choose the language. Yeah, install now. Yeah, my setup is starting. I accept the license and terms, yeah, custom, next, so everything is basically default. We don't care about the extra features, upgrading, installing, deleting something because uh, we're just needed for the management of the attack and not necessary to concentrate too much on it. So we have just managed to install Windows 7 operation system and now uh, as you can see, yeah, it's here. And in case, I just want to add one extra thing, that in case your Windows 7 starts to log, you see the mouse is glitching, and uh, you see that the performance is not good as you as you would expect, you would go to the uh, devices, uh, devices and uh, click from there, insert guest edition CD image. And as soon as you insert it, you will go to the computer, uh, and you will find out that there is a uh, device with removable, removable storage and under, uh, under the devices with removable storage you will see there is a virtual box guest edition. You click on it. Uh, yeah, take some time. Yeah, open folder to view, view files, and you you will just you will just install VirtualBox Windows editions. You will just click next, and whatever it says, you will just allow it. And after after the installation will be done, it will ask you uh, it will ask you to reboot your device, uh, your virtual machine. And as soon as you reboot, it will start to work properly. So yeah, I wanted uh, to add that extra. So in case you uh, face and a performance issue so for now let's cl close our uh, close our virtual machine and, uh, additionally if you are not familiar with the virtual machines you can see it's fully a functional uh, Windows 7 machine uh, you can uh, even do oh yeah you can you can you can do whatever you want it's fully functional uh, fully functional Windows 7 yeah so you can do whatever you want basically with it. So for now, let's turn off our Windows 7 operation system. Yeah, and let's start to install Kali Linux. To do that, we are going to follow the same steps as we installed a Windows 7. You click new, you write here, let's say Kali Linux. You go next, 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 as we did, and in the end, you select the ISO file, but uh, many people have faced an issue with an ISO file, so that's why I want to include an OVA file, which is uh, click once and run, run, so something like this, yeah, uh, so you don't need to install the ISO file, so, so there is a two types actually of a virtual machine, one is installed, so you just replace it in a virtual box, it it is more lengthy in the manner of sizes than the ISO, but is already installed one, and the ISO file which you install from zero. Uh, I found an a Kali Linux already in, already made OVA file by zsecurity.com. Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, it's uh, uh, it's sponsored by. Uh, uh, Zaid Sabi, he's a very good instructor in Udemy for ethical hacking. Yeah, so so yeah, I got from there. So you don't need to install it from from scratch. So what you have, what you need to do, you just basically download from the link I will provide in the requirements list. Uh, so you will get a file like this: Kali 2020 64, customized by Z Security. Dot .ova so you you will just only need and as you can see it's already recognized by virtual box as a virtual machine so you will double click on it 
and it will just give you a uh, requirement list so the name will be like this you can customize the name as you want like let's say it's, let's say it's Kali 2020 yeah description modified image of Kali uh, Debian the ROM you can select the ROM you want the amount of ROM it will support DVT USB control sound control network yeah and everything is there we'll just click on the import and it will take some time like around two minutes five minutes depending on your operation system to the my installation process or insertion process already finished so let's click start on Kali 2020 click start and let's wait until it opens I hope my screen is capturing it this so let me make it like this so yeah so it will take some time uh the first time usually it uh turns on a little bit slower so let's wait until it opens so just the logo of cal linux tip. and uh, if you are if you have used cal linux before you will notice that there is uh, many changes on the uh, on the graphical user interface and everything and there is one thing uh, very important I would like to mention if you download the Kali Linux 2020 from some other source the la latest version there will be no uh, username and password of root and tour which is basically an access for the root there will be the username and password will be just Kali Kali uh, if I'm I'm not mistaken yeah it will be Kali Kali so it's uh, why I use the customized version because if you are using the standard version, uh, they they excluded uh, the root access from the Kali Linux. So every time you have to you want to perform some action, you have to write sudo 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 to, to get the permission. But in this one, the modified version, the ca the root uh, user is back again, and you don't need anymore to write sudo. So the user, the default username for older versions of Kali's and the customized version, is the username is root, and the password is the reverse of the word root. So T O O R R. So again, so yeah, here here is the here is the. A graphical user interface of Kali. It looks pretty much uh, similar to the Linux operation system. It has some features uh, of the Mac OS also. So yeah, so this is this is uh, this is the Kali Linux. Uh, so the first thing I would like to say that compared to Windows operation system, it is more based on the terminal so if you're familiar with the CMD of the Windows operation system it is same as the CMD so yeah uh, in order to access the terminal of the Cal Linux and start to proceed you will see on the left side there is a terminal uh, yeah and here is it you can type commands let's say you want to know your current directory you can write pwd and we are creating the root directory uh, in order to see what's inside the no, uh, a root directory you can use the command from the windows dir or ls yeah, to show everything if you want to navigate to the desktop you write cd desktop yeah so and there will be nothing in the desktop yeah Oops, sorry, misclicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but as I clicked, oh, I will tell you one thing. The Terminator is another fancy tool that I, I like to use very much. It's pre-installed in the customized version by Zetsa B. Uh, so what's the difference between Terminal and Terminator? Is that, let's say, you want, usually when we perform the man-in-the-middle attack, you will notice, we'll use the Terminator, you'll notice that there, we need an two windows at the same time so we can see both the windows actually it makes like similar like people use nowadays two monitors so let's say if i want to in one window ping google.com in other window let's say extract information from google i can just right click split horizontally and i'll try some other command here 
that's the cool case that you cannot do with the uh, standard terminal. You can obviously click new tab and go for here, but uh, it will be uh, you will it will not be visible for you. So yeah, that's the cool feature about the Terminator. So let me get a little bit make for you familiar with the Kalinux. Uh, there is a tab called Applications. And here is the pre-installed applications that are very cool if you're familiar with it. You can know how to perform them. There is an information information gathering tools that you can gather information about the website and NetDiscover and Mob that are actually just two tools actually about discovering cool nodes that are connected to the, your network. So what phone, computer, what is connected to your network, what's their IP address, at, what's the traffic they are flowing, uh, what's the ports they have, what's the open ports, filter port, and etc. Vulnerability analysis, web application, uh, password attacks used for cracking, cracking passwords, a very cool attack, wireless attack. Uh, wireless attacks that are used for hacking Wi-Fi. So, so uh, let's say you have the authority and the contract to penetrate, penetrate and test an a company. Uh, so you have the authority, but you are uh, actually attacking in a black box. The black box means the company came to you saying, "Oh, hack our company. We will give you nothing." So what you start to do the first is, of course, hack the Wi-Fi to get inside the network. And after getting inside the network, then you start to perform man-in-the-middle attack. Because if you are not inside the network, it's impossible to perform man-in-the-middle attack. Yeah, so this is Cal Linux. Nothing uh, super proper uh, or difficult about it. Um, yeah. So that's it basically. So before starting to install any application inside Kali Linux, we have to perform a few Linux uh, operation system uh, basic functions that will update the system. So in order to do that, we will go here and we'll write apt-get update. So it's going to take some time. It's going to download. Uh, it's going to download some uh, repository information. It's going to uh, update uh, some of the uh, scripts that we have inside the uh, operation system, which will allow us to download the latest versions of the software that we are needed. So far, we managed to already. Uh, install Windows 7 operation system, install Kali Linux operation system, and uh, that's it. Yeah, in the in the following uh, parts, we are going to talk about uh, the tool that is called Better Cup, how how to install the Better Cup, how to configure the Better Cup, and most importantly, how to configure the network between the virtual machines. So right now they are getting their internet connection from the host machine, right? My host machine is this Windows 10 operation system and I'm connected to the internet. Uh, yeah, and the virtual machines are actually sharing the same internet as I have. So you can imagine a scenario that uh, Kali Linux is true LAN connected to my Windows 10 and my Windows 10 true LAN is connected to the or by Wi-Fi is connected to the router. So and the Windows 7 is also connected by LAN to my Windows 10 and to of uh, my Windows 10 to the router. But we have a scenario that Windows 10 can recognize Windows 7. Windows 10 can recognize Kali Linux. But can Kali Linux recognize Windows 7? So uh, overall, we have three operation systems. Uh, first one is the our host, Windows 10 operation system. The second one is uh, Windows, 10, uh, Windows 7, our victim. And of course, finally, Kali Linux. So if we... If you have dropped back to the networking classes you took or you heard or you have never heard, uh, usually when you connect to a router, you get an IP address from the router. So if you go to CD and decide CMD, you type ipconfig and you go a little bit down, you will see that you, ha you are sharing, uh, you have an IP uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, uh, as I'm connected by internet, internet, I will have an uh, IP address uh, 
under the role of Ethernet adapter Ethernet. Yeah. So uh, if you look at the IPv4 address ro uh, row, you will see that there is an, uh, has some digits, which is uh, obviously our IP address. So it's 192.168.0.100. So it's not our public IP address. Uh, otherwise, I would not uh, share it with you because it's very dangerous to share the IP, your public IP address with someone. But as it is local and it's dynamic, it's going to change all the time if it's not disabled but from the router settings. We got this IP address. So if I take my phone and check the IP address of the phone, which is connected to the same router, I will get an IP address of let's say 192.168.0.26 or 134 doesn't matter something that is between um, from 0 to 254 why because you can look at the subnet mask it's uh, the limitation is till 255 uh, this is a little bit of networking we don't care about that too uh, as much as uh, because we what I need from you is to understand uh, the basic idea of IP addresses and how uh, different nodes di different di devices share, sh share the same network so okay as I said I'm connected to the router with internet cable and I'm getting this IP address but if, if we go to a virtual box and for demonstration purposes I would like to just to uh, started the Kali 2020 before changing some settings. Let's start the Kali. Enter. Yeah. Okay, so we, I hope you remember that the default username and password is root and tour. Yeah. So uh, if we go to the uh, terminal and type inside the terminal ifconfig, if you have noticed that compared to the Windows operation system, CMD, uh, in CMD we write ipconfig to check the um, IP address of the computer. But in Linux operation systems we write ifconfig. I don't know why people decided to do that, but anyways. Uh, so. Mm. You can see that I have LO, which stands for localhost, and is 1 to 127.0.0.1. That, that's about we don't care now. And we see there it, there is an HATH0. 0 stands for the first one in an array, so it's the whole, first and only internet connection that we have. And ATH, uh, as, the, as the initials suggest, it stands for internet. So we have an internet connection which gets an IP address of 10.0.2. 10, uh, 10 uh, uh, sorry, 10.0.2.15. Yeah, and it has the net mask of 255. But uh, you you will ask a question, obviously yourself. If you have noticed, we are using a virtual machine, and how? is this virtual machine getting an internet connection how is that even possible that's a question that rises and in the theory and the way that virtual machines work they're actually actually sharing the internet connection of the host operation system so let's say even if our host operation system uh, my windows 10 was connected to the router internet by wi-fi not by internet in any ways, the virtual machine will be getting internet as if there is an ATA0. So that's why it's getting a uh, virtually created IP address, which we can use for uh, connecting to the internet. So let's say I want to ping something like pinggoogle.com. So you can see uh, that I, ops, sorry, you can see that I'm uh, receiving an packets from the uh, packets from the google.com server so uh, which basically means that there is an internet connection for it yeah so this so same happens to the our windows 7 operation system if we go inside the windows 7 operation system and start to ping and or check our ip address we'll see that there is an ip virtually created ip address and if we try 
to pay a ping from this IP address to Windows 7 IP address uh, or from Windows 10 to Kali, it, it will not work properly. We will not get the result as we want. Why? Because we want to make a virtual environment as if we are sitting at home and there is three people in the home. Uh, one is the hacker, second, second and third are just random users and they share the same network, same IP address. So in order to do that, I'm going, uh, I'm going to close the virtual machine we have then going to click on the virtual machine I'm interested in, click settings, network, and from here uh, you can see there is an uh, under you know, column of adapter one, under section of adapter one, uh, you can see that there is an uh, option of attached to. We want to change this from NAT to NAT network. And uh, you can see that I already get the name of a NAT network so in case you don't get this, I think if my memory is not failing me, uh, by default you do not get the NAT network name. So to do this, it's, it's an easy, you just, uh, you just go for preferences, network, and click the green green uh, green cross here, and it will create a NAT network here. So as I already created, I'm not interested in the second one, so I will just delete it. Yes, so I will leave the one that we have. So you just click on the... A green arrow and it will drop you back to give you back a NAT network. Okay, so let me check is it saved? Yes. Okay, we go back to the Windows 7. We click again, NAT network. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So now if we rerun Kali Linux, By the way, before it runs, I would like to talk about several options we have. So what we just did now, oh, if we click here, you can see there is NAT, bridge adapter, internal network, host, generic, NAT network, and etc. Yeah, not attached. So I would like to briefly describe what the options are, why they are used, and why we especially choose the NAT network. So if we look at the NAT, what NAT, uh, NAT does, more accurately spelling NAT basically gives you an internet connection and this internet connection is limited only to your virtual machine so you get an uh, you get an IP address you are able to connect to the internet but you cannot communicate with any device that is connected to this network because there is none so other virtual machines are not connected to the same NAT you are just have so you are just getting a tunnel to the internet through host and you host and the internet have only connection. Other virtual machines have nothing to do with you and you cannot communicate with them. Breached adapter and yeah, and in, uh, in NAT, as I told you, you are getting a virtual IP address. Yeah, in breached adapter, what is happening with the help of your host operation system, with the help of Windows 10, you are directly connecting to the to the router you have and you are getting an IP address as if you are a real user. So I got, I got an 192.168.0.100 on my Windows 10 because it's a real user, it's a real operation system, it's not a virtual machine and it got an IP address as if it's a real user. And same happens to the virtual machine that if you put into breached adapter mode. So and the other one, the NAT network, which we said what NAT is doing. NAT is basically a mixture of NAT and breached adapter. Now we get an IP address which is virtually created IP address. It allows you to uh, communicate with the host. It allows you to uh, go to the internet and then an extra feature that is not included inside NAT. Now we have a network. So what the net, uh, as the name suggests, network, there is a net of working stations and other nodes also can communicate with you. So in an NAT, we couldn't communicate with virtual machines such as Windows 7. Now we create a network that any, uh, any uh, virtual machine that is connected to the same non NAT network, there is an, a virtual network that we can communicate with each other and share, uh, send and receive packets. Uh, click OK. Let me close this. Oh, mm, let's hide it. So root 
Paper. Yeah, so if I go to the terminal, I have config, you can see I got an IP address, uh, it, it gave me the same IP address, but now if I go to the virtual box and uh, turn Windows 7, so I would like now to show that how they walk near each other, so let's make like this, oops, start Windows normally. So sometimes also an external tip I would like to give you when you're working with virtual machines sometimes your mouse gets stuck inside the virtual machine and you cannot move it to somewhere else so let's say if it's stuck here you just press control and it goes outside so yeah so you, as you can see detect a network that there is a network connection it asks for you so let's say like uh, it's a home network yeah we are at home Okay, so if I bring these two operation systems next to each other and I go to C and now if I go to CMD and write IP config, you can see that I got an IP address of 10.0 uh, 10.0.2.4. So it's again it's in a virtual IP address, it doesn't exist, it exists only inside the NAT network. So if I try from here to ping to this IP address, I hope it works. Point two point four. Yes, excellent, perfect. You can see that uh, this operation system uh, is able to send packets, uh, send packets to the this IP address. Now, let's uh, the IP address is ten point zero point two point fifteen. So let's try from Windows Seven to send any packet and see whether it works there or not. Amazing. So you can see it is two uh, packet sends received, lost 0%. Uh, excellent. So if you have reached to the moment when you can ping from one virtual machine to another virtual machine, it means you have managed successfully to set them up inside a NAT network. So as we have already managed to set our uh, virtual machines let's already start to talk about the program if you are going to use the customized version of Kali Linux made by Zaid Sabi uh, you have you will have the tool already pre-installed uh, in your uh, in your Kali Linux I highly suggest to use the customized version why because uh, there is a version of the tool there's different versions of the same tool and if you use if you if you just go by internet or by the command apt.get uh, uh, apt get install the tool named bettercup it will download and install a version that is not working uh, some features are not working properly in the newer version so i highly recommend that you use the Kali linux by zaid sabi the customized version is the latest version yeah so that's just an uh, additional i would like to say because some people uh, face issues with using the tool i show some stuff in the video that is not working for some people uh, the reason is uh, because some people do not follow the same installation process and some version uh, are not compatible with some uh, softwares so either the Kali Linux is old or the software is old and it's making an issue. So better to follow the same exact way as if in the video. And now uh, as I'm recording, it's April, uh, April 2020. So, so far you see here, it's going to work till this current time period. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, as you can see, we have the Windows 7 and the Kali Linux. Windows 7 is completely uh, under the security measures so the system secure the firewall is firewall is turned on the uh, antivirus is also turned on there is an antivirus right <laughs> in the yeah oops misclicked windows defender yeah everything is fine yeah it's all turned on so great so we have a fully secure in the brackets of course uh, a Windows 7 operation system 
And yeah, as I said, it's not limited to any uh, operation system yeah, because the type of attack doesn't care actually do you have a firewall or uh, high secure, high antivirus program. So it all depends on other measures, which we will talk in the, I think the last part of the video, if not during the parts. So yeah, now by not talking too much, let's get directly into the program. So in order to run the program, you write better cap. Okay, so if you run the command and you get this yellow uh, box with the IP addresses, then great, you have achieved it. So yeah, uh, we have the program and as you can see, it shows the router router IP address, uh, dash 24 means basically that all 255 it includes. And this is our IP address. So any program actually, uh, most of the programs in the Kali Linux in order to understand the program there is like few ways either you watch tutorial videos second you you look the documentation by yourself or there is an extra thing that the the programmers usually include inside the uh, script software and hacking tools is the help command which briefly gives you an introduction about the software so let's type help and see what we have here so help module help module list available commands or show module specific help if no module active show information about active module quit close the session and exit yeah so we have some commands here and we have a modules as it's written here that we can use in our program so what are these mo modules uh, so we have uh, many of them not all of them you actually need you need some of them which we are going to talk about so the first thing when you want to use the uh, man in the middle attack you want to understand which target actually you are going to hack so you don't want to hack anything right you don't want to hack everything everyone and everything right you want to uh, you want to hack the specific target you're interested in or specific uh, let's say you have given the authority to hack a company right maybe you are interested in the HR department of the company uh, and in order to uh, perform man in the middle attack on HR 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 department computers or workstations devices whatever you have to understand which IP address are they are following? Uh, which uh, computers is exactly there? So the first phase of any hacking is information gathering. So in order to do that, you are going to write net dot probe on. As you can see from here, there is an, the, the, we are going to run the module actually net dot probe uh, on uh, net dot probe. Yeah, it's not running right now. And if you want to run any module, you just write the name of the module and type on on so i will click on as you can see it started to detect some stuff let me maximize it actually uh it, i think it will be more better to understand yeah so it dis uh, discards some endpoints and uh, some endpoints yeah you will it will not be clear right now for you so let me make some better better uh example and show you what exactly it means so what does net probe uh, on does well, it turns on the module net dot probe which actually starts to discover any uh, computers devices whatever it is connected to your network so right now we are in an environment that we have made already so we know there is only one device that is connected to our connected to our network right it's the victim pc which is the windows 7 so but anyways we are imagining that we are in a real life scenario usually if you are in a real life scenario in in this table there will be many 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 computers uh, devices and many many things don't worry about this this is just an uh, oops yeah you, if you if you think it, may, it makes a mess for you, you just can type clear and it will clear everything. So yeah, uh, if I again type net dot show, oops, yeah net dot show, yeah oh, again typo, sorry for that net dot show. Yeah, you can see it discovered few uh, devices that are connected to our network. So the first one is 10.0.2.15880. It's our our computer the second one is the gateway we are again not interested in it the third one is the tunnel 
which will not exist in real life scenario. Uh, so we don't care about it and we can see there is an, an IP address right there uh, with the name of victim PC and the, when the man in uh, the better cop tried to guess what exactly is it and it's guessed that there is a it's some kind of a computer system uh, with the name victim PC so we know that the computer we are targeting has a name of victim dash pc uh, actually the name is not necessary to be victim pc because depends how did you install the windows 7 maybe you put in another name and it gave you another name so we know the ip address right so that's a cool actually we would like to store this ip address somewhere i will i will just copy it or mem memorize it but usually in real life it would be a good practice to keep a notepad or somewhere to store the information gathering reports so again, I'm going to type help to see what else we have. So net.probe actually turned on, uh, we did the net.recon, uh, event, events.stream and other things. So it, uh, when you drive on it directly turned on three, uh, yeah, three uh, other modules. So uh, the, se uh, the second thing that we want to do is ARP spoof. ARP spoof is actually the uh, the command that does the process that we were talking about in the first first very first video when we were changing the uh, mac addresses to trick the users to think that i'm the, for the user i'm the router for the uh, router i'm the user so basically that's going to happen in this module in order to do that we are going to write help arp dot spoof which uh, I will hope will give you give us some information about a uh, module called ARP spoof. Okay, so in order to start ARP spoof, we have to write ARP spoof dot on, uh, ARP dot spoof on. Okay, we know about this from the previous module. Second, ARP dot ban. Let's read about in ban mode, meaning the target's community will not work. Okay, so this is basically just a small introduction. We don't care about this. This is actually the parameters we care about. So each module expect from running and turning off. I think I made a mess for me. I'm sorry about this. Just sometimes it gives you an extract information that distracts people from reading the content. So let me write again. Yeah, so this is the parameters we are interested in. Every module actually has a parameter that you can set. And ARP spoof has the following parameters. So first uh, thing that we can directly notice is ARP.spoof.targets. So in target, we put the uh, IP address or the MAC address of the uh, uh, device that we are interested in. So as, we, if, as you remember, we are interested in the Windows 7 operation system, which has the IP address of 10.0.2.4. So we are going to do a we are going to do set to set the parameter arp.spoof.targets and the IP address 10.0.2.4. Yes, so target, target is set to the IP address 10.0.2.4. Uh, you can uh, you can put the IP range. It's not necessary to be in a one IP address. You can just uh, put a delimiter between the IP addresses and it will work perfectly, perfectly. As you can see, it's even the word target is in a plural way. Yeah, the second thing, most important thing, one of the most important things is turning on the full duplex. So what full duplex means? As we are going to trick the user to think that we are a router, we don't have an internet connection, right? Uh, which we, um, the user and the router share. So what we are, the full duplex means that is going the internet is going to pass through us. It's not going to come to reach our doors and say, oh no, you know, we got the IP, we got what you are looking for. Goodbye. We we are, will not give you internet. It will look suspicious. So in order to make uh, it not suspicious, you are going to turn on arp.spoof.full duplex. So again, we are going to say set arp.spoof. Actually, you don't need to type the command fully. As soon as you write arp.sp and click tab, it will direct the autocomplete for you. So I will write full and again autocomplete. And this time we are going to put it true because by default it's false. So 
if it's false it means the opposite opposite of it it's true so we put true okay that's it now let's press again help uh, yes we set the commands now let's run the ARP spoof so ARP spoof on okay we have started to ARP started probing one target it found that we are probing a one target again we write help we can see that our ARP spoof is running on so there is no issues so far yeah <laughs> I hope there will not be in the future also so and the last step that we are interested in is turning on net.sniff. As soon as we start to turn on the net.sniff, it's actually going to sniff, as the name suggests, the traffic that uh, Windows 7 tries to access. Sorry. Yeah. So to do that again, as all the modules we do, we write net.sniff on. Okay, you can see directly there is popping up things. We can see there is in the Windows Windows Update.com download, and this is actually the website that the Windows 7 is trying to access all the time. You can see there is some Windows Update uh, websites are coming out. This is very normal because why? We just installed the Windows 7, and Windows 7 is trying to access some some Windows updates. You can see it's all the time downloading Windows updates, so it's trying to update itself. But okay, it's not showing anything here, of course. And yeah, you can see uh, Windows will install updates as scheduled. So you basically, from far away, you can follow what activities are going inside the uh, victim you are interested in. So if I go to Internet Explorer now, and let's go to Google.com. Let's see what's going on. You can see that the victim PC try to access google.com wow that's cool i think right uh, we can see that the window it's going to uh, it's it's went to google.com so he actually typed the google.com so we managed to capture that information now uh, let's do something more interesting oh it's going to take a little bit time oops no internet connection huh. let me check that I'm not sure what the issue was, sorry for the post. It just didn't give me <laughs> any reason and it's just started to work, maybe some cause of uh, problem. So let me set uh, Google in the English mode. Okay, so we are in the Windows 7. Let me bring it back here so it will be more clear for us. Yeah, so let's go some search for some website. Let's say let's get a list for, for HTTP websites. Okay, so I'm just randomly looking for an HTTP website. Okay, so you can see there is a many websites. Let's go any of them. Let's say wewill.com. Yeah, for example, wewill.com. And we have managed to enter the wewill.com. And let's go to inside our, uh, our, yeah, our, our Kali Linux and see what's going on. So we see again the updates. Updates are going on all the time. But we are not interested in the updates. We know that it's getting updated already 100 times, but we are interested. This is actually a log, okay? So we are going to analyze the log and see what happened here and trying to search for the webull.com. So in the future videos, I will show you a better example where you will be able to find a specific website from this mess. So you can see it's a mess. So yeah. I just have turned off the Windows update so it will make uh, our thing more easier. Uh, actually, I, I would like to show you the way you turn off Windows updates in case you are interested. I uh, will do it together. So you go just to services. Yeah, let me maximize it. Okay. Okay, buddy, this guy wants to play. Yeah, Windows update. Let's look for it. So yeah, Windows update. So it, you can see it's starting all the time. Maybe it makes even your process uh, process power a little bit slower. So actually, it's the best case is to turn off Windows update in any operation system. You are going to do the update itself because it's going to slow down the process. You are not interested in the up updates. You just interested the operation system itself for tests. So that's why we. We'll, uh, uh, turn it off. So anyways, 
if you even don't turn off the Windows Update, don't worry about it. We are going to use a tool called Wireshark in the future videos. Uh, and while we are going to use Wireshark, we will not care anymore about um, how many logs there are because we will have a specific filter and a search bar which will help us to find the information we are interested more easily. So, okay, and you click here, disabled, apply, okay. Uh, so let me close this now. Let me close Internet Explorer also. Bring it here. Yeah. I'll just clear it here. Okay, still getting some stuff. Uh, it's it's already turned off, but it's getting the things that it already already was going. So yeah, let's go to the Google again and search for a uh, well, HTTP website. Do you know? Thank you. Okay, so let's let's stop here before it goes to the lo long long mess. <laughs> okay, so from the cat Linux, you can see that it uh, the user we are interested in just accessed scratchpads.eu. So as you can see from the Windows 7, this is the website we are actually uh, uh, asked and entered. So this actually very too much information about the user. Imagine the user accesses to the websites that is a personal and confidential and you're getting the website he's accessing. So this is not only limited to this. I will show you more more cool stuff that will surprise many of you. So let's go any of this. Let's say I would like to get a website that actually has a login and password section. Uh, do you have any? Oh, let let us for now maximize. So we'll search any any uh, website with login and password section. So because we are interested to grab some cool information about the user, such as login and password. Oh, okay. So none of you have a login and password. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for my surprise, I didn't find any website with the login and password section. But if you have managed to find any HTTP website in the login and password section, you can try the same thing and it'll work, I'm sure. So let's say I found a place where we can enter some credentials. For example, this is a website and that is running on HTTP. Be sure it's not HTTPS. It must be HTTP. In future videos, we'll talk about the Wireshark, how to analyze this mess, and how to do the same attack uh, on Facebook, Gmail, uh, and pretty any website that is running on HTTPS. So, for example, here if I write, let's say, Armin, my email address, blah, 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 gmail.com, and let's imagine here was the password section, and I write the password one, two, three, four, five, six. So, and it's message here. And let's make the the yeah y t t. Okay, send message. As you can see, as soon as we clicked, the capture was not correct. But anyways, we don't care about the capture. As soon as we click the button send, we got a lot of logs. And if we scroll up a little bit, we can see there is an, uh, an highlighted, uh, strictly highlighted with a bold uh, right, uh, red color. You can see that there is an information that we can read to discover what is it. And you can see it's actually the same, same thing that we just end. The name as an Armen, mail as an DAS, DAS, at gmail.com, subject one, two, three, four, five, six. So it successfully managed to capture not only the website, but also the credentials and information that you have just uh, posted inside that website. So basically you stole the data from the user. So, okay, so let's uh, already go on for the most in interesting part where we are going to talk about um, why we have used HTTP, not HTTPS and how we can bypass that uh, restriction and security. So, Man in the Middle attack has a long time history. It's a, not a new attack. So before, before the HTTPS came out, uh, there was only HTTP, which stands for Hyper Transfer Text Protocol. So it, it's the protocol that uh, allows us to send and receive the HTML. 
but what it was not secure enough so people especially hackers uh, have managed to find and use the attack called man in the middle attack to grab all the credentials uh, information and html tags that they are interested in from users that they are not authorized to do so and security professionals come up with the idea that what if we encrypt the credentials that are going to be sent from the uh, from the user to the access point or from the access point to the user so they managed to create a uh, protocol uh, that they called https so this s stands st uh, stands for security so hyper transfer text protocol security so this security measurement encrypts the packets that are sent and uh, and these packets get decrypted at the end point so basically what happens as soon as you as we just send the name and the password the email this data in http web website gets collected and posted to the server of the website and that's it from so, so it jumps through the hops till it reaches through the router to the hops till it reaches to the server but the same thing happens in the https but in this case as soon as you click the post button it gets encrypted so before it reaches to the access point or true man in the middle uh, access point it is encrypted so anyways in the log you receive this name username password and so on whatever but you know it's an encrypted with aes so you basically get an a gibberish uh, get a gibberish which you cannot understand so this is the thing that is done uh, by https which is a good security measurement a good security measure uh, it's still very, uh, very relevant. All uh, mo most, uh, um, like ninety percent, ninety-nine percent of the companies use it in order to avoid, uh, avoid the man-in-the-middle attack. But there are some steps that you can do in order to bypass HTTPS. Uh, but not H HSTS, which we'll talk a little bit later. HSTS is a more stricter pro pro protocol that is kind of an uh, addition to HTTPS for completely avoiding the man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, but there is one more, again, solution for it, which we'll talk about. Just wanted to give you briefly the things we are going to do now. So, uh, in order to bypass HTTPS and HSTS, in the Kali Linux, we have to uh, turn on one extra module that again is provided by Zaid Sabih, which you can do just by typing HS and tap uh, autocomplete. Tap to autocomplete. So as soon as you autocomplete, it will give you HSTS hijack, HSTS hijack, slash HSTS hijack. Yeah. So you click enter. For me, uh, it will say more module HTTP dot proxy is already running, but for you, it will give you uh, it, it will give you the values and everything that it is an enabled, and you can and again it will give you the, the text box to type things out. Uh, so yeah, this is the way you turn on the HTTPS uh, and HSTS bypass. So now there's some things that you have to consider uh, in order to bypass HTTPS. Uh, what does it do? Uh, you, in order to bypass HTTPS, you have to go basically for an HTTPS website. And anytime you go to the website, you will have a look at the up place, whether your website you are currently running is HTTP or no. Of course, you are the hacker, you don't know the user is saying what, but in uh, for, for educational purposes, in order to know whether you are running HTTP or HTTPS, you just look in the uh, URL bar so you can see that msn.com is running on the uh, HTTP so basically anything I type and do in this place it will it will show us here so if we we'll have a look at the log you can see it's going ooh, a lot of a lot of information here yeah. so now what I will do I will go to a Google if I go to google.com google.com you can see that my google.com is running on http but in reality it should not be like this if i go from my host to google.com so this is my host if i go google.com you will notice that the website is running actually on https the sign of the lock means that the website is running on https but 
for our surprise, <laughs> you can see that there is an HTTP, which basically means that the website is not secure. The website is not encrypted. And I'm sure um, most of the people don't, do not look even up to see whether the website is running on HTTP or HTTPS. And now if I type here, oops, yeah, if I, if I type here uh, anything, everything that I get from this Google search will not be encrypted. And this is the trick that we are going to use. So as you can see, uh, as I'm doing the video from United Arab Emirates, the Google is running on the Arabic version of the Google, which is, uh, for some reason, is not running on HTTPS. If I run the United States version or UK version, it will be in the uh, on the uh, encrypted version. So some versions of Google, such as Russian, uh, Irish, uh, uh, Arabic, uh, United, uh, United Arab Emirates version, and many other countries are not running the encrypted version. So if you are trying to perform this attack in the United States, it will probably not work. But if you are sitting in another country and you want to make a penetration testing on the company, you can prove that the company will face an issue uh, if some hacker manages to perform this. So right now, if I type, uh, let's say, uh, Facebook, okay, so you, you can see still, still I, I am on the HTTP. Uh, it's good for a hacker, of course. And you can see that it gave me the Facebook and here we are interested in the facebook.com and you can see here it's saying HTTPS uh, column slash slash facebook.com and, and there is HTTPS. Uh, please uh, be sure to see the HTTPS there. Don't worry about it. As soon as we click on it, uh, the Internet Explorer was giving some uh, error and it was related to my internet connection so I just downloaded the Google Chrome which I suggest for everyone so it will be more clear for you because in all browsers it's hard to figure out things so okay the same thing we went to Google the Arabic version of the Google or any other country uh, version you would like to try you can experiment with it so I wrote Facebook and if I scroll down I click on the Facebook login you can see that it uh, transferred me to a eligible facebook.com page. You can see there is the en-gb, just a uh, substitute of a Facebook page. But if you do, uh, uh, the website also looks very pretty legitimate. You can see that uh, everything is fine. But you will notice one thing if you look, pay, uh, pay attention closely, that actually the website URL is not Facebook. Dot com. It's facebook.com. This part of website, when you, which you see, maybe it's new to you, but it's pretty legitimate. There is nothing to do about this. But this part is very suspicious. It, uh, if you look, it's like corn, but from far it looks like the letter M. But in reality, it's written facebook.com. Uh, it sounds funny, I know, but this is actually an uh, attack that many people get fooled. So if I go back, uh, I would like to show you that it's not necessary for it. You can see it's here written not secure because it's running on HTTP. If I click on facebook.com, yeah, for example, this website about facebook.com, you can see it got transferred also again to an HTTP website. Uh, so everything here gets transferred to HTTP website. If we go back uh, the, and let's try something else, for example, let's see how it works. It's not going to work all the time because the security professionals from the other start are trying to cover these attacks. But if let's try to target Twitter. Okay, so let's open f several Twitters. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Let's see which one of them works. So this one, you can see Twitter is actually working. It got again twitter.com. So, so this is the official one of the login of Twitter. I just write Twitter, click, and I get an all official the Arabic version. So if I type here like Armin and password one, two, three, four, five, and click here, you can see from here that I, I, I went to the google.ie, which, which is the Irish version of the Google. Yeah, 
and let's try to see whether we can find an, uh, any username and password here so it's uh, a little bit a process of a headache but you can see that we got twink.com it's passing through the websites and you can see here, here even we got an uh, twitter.com it gave us an error that the login and password were not uh, correct so that's all already in the result that we managed to see that the user trying to uh, enter twitter.com and if we scroll up scroll up let's see whether we can find something related to actually the color must be red if bypass equals yes um, okay so you can see pretty that we have managed to find the twitter.com but so far uh, to find the password inside uh, this kind of uh, environment is very very hard so what we are going to do we are going to use a tool called Wireshark uh, in order to run the Wireshark we can go to the applications type Wireshark turn it on and you can see that there is an, a, a lot of data in 880 as I said the, the traffic is going to pass through our network is going to uh, everything the user uh, victim uh, asks from the router it passes through our uh, network and then it, uh, it passes through us then it goes to the uh, access point so that's why it's uh, there is a lot of traffic generated in 880 even if we didn't access any browser so let's click on it okay so it's going to analyze all the time so yeah this is this is the tool basically I know it looks a mess uh, and it looks similar to the thing that we were going to do uh, we, were, we were doing but now we have a, a very cool fi uh, feature which is uh, which is a filter that we can type different commands and if you click on this uh, small button here it gives you an and a good uh, good uh, help or a cheat sheet for the uh, for the commands that you can execute for example if you click on this one it will only show the TCP packets that you have uh, if you click yeah and you have to click search yeah and if you click for example UDP it will show you only the packets that are uh, went through UDP so there is, it's a pretty very good feature and very helpful uh, you can use it to almost anything or, or for example let's say you are targeting a multiple uh, clients you have multiple man in the middle attacks and each one has its own IP address but you don't want to see imagine if right now you are getting so much data from one target what will happen if you have three or four targets it will be like uh, uh, just uh, uh, impossible just to read one word one password from all the data so for example you can in order to avoid it you can avoid it by typing an IP at the specific IP address for example uh, let me try to find that uh, there have to be a command that only gives you yeah for example IP dot other ADDR equals to and the IP address that you are interested in for example in our case we are interested in uh, 10.0.2.4 right so I'll write 10.2 oh sorry 10.2.0.2.4 so if I click search you can see that it gives me only the uh, IP addresses that are related to this so you can see that with source is from here destination is there so let me just briefly explain the table so here we have the source from where the packet goes the destination of where the packet reaches so in this case if if I'm not wrong this is the IP address of the Google so from here the IP address 10.0.2.4 sends a packet from this source to the destination IP address called 172.217 19.14 and it's sending a TCP packet and there is some extra information about the TCP packet but that's cool right that's a lot of data but we are not interested in the numbers we are interested in a uh, text string 
So in order to find the text string, I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to put an, uh, an, uh, an uh, filter that only shows the HTTP, uh, HTTP packets. So why HTTP? Because as you remember from HTTPS and H HSTS, we downgraded to HTTP. So we only want to see the HTTP ones. So okay, if we click HTTP, let me maximize it for you. Yeah, let me bring it down. You can see there is a, like a not much, uh, not much. There is a, and it, so so it's it's better to understand. Also, you can click to sort which destination you want. So you can see this is the Google dot, Google dot com. We send some packets to Google dot com. If you click on it, you will get more more information from here. So it is a redirector kind of um, I, if I'm not wrong, it, you can see there is an even a Microsoft written down there. So it's kind of a redirector that directed you to the particular website. You can read much more information out of there. So yeah, there is many packets also from this IP address. We go back to here from this IP address. We go back from to there. There's some bunch of different IP addresses. Yeah. So, okay. The next thing that we are going to do is actually search, uh, which we are going to, to cover in the next part and uh, I think the final part of the video where we are going to talk about the search function to find the string and uh, security measurements that we can implement in order to avoid this. So yeah, let's repeat the basic steps. So we uh, perform the man in the middle attack on the Windows 7 machine, then uh, yeah, we turn on the HSTS hijack, which will uh, downgrade HTTPS from uh, to from HTTPS to HTTP. So yeah, we are turning. In case in the last video, it was already pre-turned for me, didn't show anything. But uh, if you see the following window, the following output from the terminal, it means that it is working already. So as you can see, in order to bypass HSTS, we're going to perform a DNS spoofing. Uh, if some of you doesn't know what means uh, DNS spoofing, basically, uh, first you have to understand what means DNS. DNS stands for domain name server. So what is domain name server doing? So usually domain name server is stored in the router and there is a global one and there is an internal one. For you, and we are targeting the internal one. So what domain name server does? Let's say you want to access a google.com. So you type on your browser URL google.com, right? And as soon as you type this, this packet goes to the router and router transfers your google.com into an IP address. So which will be recognizable by other computers. So basically, so basically, the, uh, in order to communicate with the users, we use letters. When we want to communicate with the servers and routers, we need an IP address. So there is a URL and there is an IP address. We type the letters, the letters get converted to numbers. Numbers are going to be searched all over the world to find the correct server, then receive the packet back. So what we are going to do, we are going to change the facebook.com IP address to 10.0.2.15. So as soon as someone from Google do, uh, Google dot com or um, spe no specifically a Google that is not supported by HTTPS tries to access Facebook.com or any other website, this Facebook.com gets converted to a different IP address, which is ours, which which is our uh, attacker machine and it tricks the user to think this is facebook.com but in our re reality we are, it is uh, facebook.corn so everything inside gets mixed the, uh, that's the trick that we are using in order to bypass hsts and downgrade it to http so yeah let's try one more time the same attack so we enabled everything cuz we have to do uh, I, I think, yeah, I have already turned Wireshark, so I will go for 88.0. I will go to Google Chrome, as I am interested in this. Yes, you see, as soon as I clicked on the Google browser, it directly started to give me the sending and receiving packets. Actually, Wireshark is a very, very useful tool for network administrators. 
system analysts, uh, security engineers, network engineers. It's not only used for tracking man in the middle attack. Basically, this is one. This is one of the most popular, if not the only and the best one, to track the network, to see what kind of network traffic you have. For example, uh, another example expect from man in the middle attack that we can bring about this too is let's say somehow someone managed to hack your computer and he the the hacker he or she is trying to get a picture or a text file or something from your computer to his or her own computer so if you turn on wireshark and you have a firewall rules you can follow from here that from this source to this destination uh let's say a tcp pa a packet is going to, on the floor or udp packet so you are curious why from my computer to this specific ip address there is a traffic flow and if you do not trust this uh, ip address or you're suspicious and you are sure that you are not uh, communicating with this ip address anyhow you just block the ip address in the firewall set as a firewall rules so the following IP address will not be communicated with and you will evade the malware itself. The malware will be executed on your computer, but it will not benefit anyhow to the uh, hacker itself. So let's go to google.ie, which is the Irish version of the Google. So we are in a Google Irish version of the Google. So now I will uh, I will uh, search for the websites that as soon as you do the HSTS hijack, it gives you a few websites that you can work with on. It's hard coded by Zaid Sabi. So for example, if our victim enters Google in Ireland, so obviously it will take him the Google that is in his country. So for example, we are in Ireland and the user types Facebook. So he will get to the login page. So for example, login to Facebook, right? So if I click here, you can see that he got re redirected to facebook.com. It looks pretty legit. So let's type some email and password. For example, armen at gmail.com. And here, let's type some, uh, not one, two, three, four. Let's try something like AA456. Okay, login. Okay, you can see that it's loading. So far, it, it's it's loading, loading. Uh, but you can see on the left side that we have managed to capture the already the email and the password of the user. So let me maximize it for you. You can see that the password is AA456 uh, and the email is armen at gmail.com. So congratulations, you have managed successfully to hack the person uh, target uh, targets Facebook email and the password. So in case, let's imagine a scenario where there is you are not targeting only one device. There are many devices, and you are interested each uh, Facebook password of the, each device. So let's try to extract that information from the Wireshark. So there will be a no, not a mess because in real life scenario you will not have so much clear stuff. You will have a big big data. So go, let's go to the Wireshark. You, you, you can see it's already managed to capture. So let's stop it because we, we are sure that it already have to capture it. But it's not necessary to stop by clicking on the red square. You can um, make it to continue analyze. So now I will type here HTTP because we know it got down, downgraded from HTTP. Okay, I will click next. And uh, as soon in, if you are familiar with the web development, anytime you type a login and password, you're, um, there is two ways that uh, browsers work. Either the browser gets something from the server, the browser and server interaction is in this way. Either the browser gets something from the server or posts something to the server. So for example, sorry, uh, when you're trying to access facebook.com, you are getting the Facebook that dot coms html right from the facebook's server when you are posting your 
registration email and password or your login and password username and password you are posting it you are giving it this data so that's why you you can see from the info section of the wireshark i hope uh, you can see it clearly May, yeah to see this uh, maximizes i hope you can see now there is get and post section so there is a guest requests post requests and many others so we are interested only in post section because we know that our user is going to enter his Facebook email and password. So he's posting. So let's change the info and sort it by post. So yeah, so you can see it's already get posted by, uh, by uh, it, it got sorted by post. So there is a few URLs. So we can either go one by one to search for the thing we are interested in. So you can see the origin of the post is from google.ie. Uh, 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 so you can see that the user tried to enter facebook.com login page. Let's see whether there is uh, any more information that we can extract from here. So let's see what he posted. So basically now we have managed already to hack the device to get the username, the password, the only thing that is left is already to scrap inside the data and try to find uh, the login and password we are interested in. So we'll go one by one and I hope, yep, yeah, you can see that directly on the second one we found, uh, we have managed to found the email and password successfully. The email is armin at gmail.com and the password is aa456. Uh, be happy to experiment with other websites such as Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, Apple and others. Yeah, and the thing that all the time was happening, uh, and I'm sorry for that, the reason for this is that uh, the Google has a feature, Google Chrome has a feature that as soon as you sometime log in, uh, go to the specific website, let's say google.com, it stores google.com inside the browser inside your computer so the next time you log in, uh, next time you uh, ask for google.com it will bring from your previous session so let's imagine uh, you you have not been hacked before and you have accessed google.com and the hacker hacks you and uh, tricks you to enter the google.com because you are going to use Google anyways, right? Not today, tomorrow you will use. So the hacker will wait as soon as you go to the Google, he'll try to extract login and password from you. But this is not going to happen, why? Because it already has stored the google.com inside your computer. So it's not going to bring, so your browser is not going to get the modified version of Google or Facebook. It's not going to bring you facebook.com because it has already facebook.com stored in your computer. This is called caching. So the cache is the already stored file. Sorry for my spelling. <laughs> Maybe I'm... Uh, so basically, if I type it, it will be like this. So this is the thing that it stores inside your computer. So what I did, I just went to the history section and erased all... Uh, erased my all Chrome Chrome history from there and that's why it started to work but um, you will raise a question uh, who, uh, if I'm going to erase the browser's data why uh, how, how is it going to work in the real life scenario no one is going to erase his own or her own browsing data I will argue with it because many people will erase their browsing data but anyways if they didn't even erase their data, this caching property is not going to last for a long time. There is a specific time period for it. You can re re make the research on the Google and find how long is it going to take to keep this data. So after some period, the cache will be erased and your uh, attack will work. So congratulations, uh, we have passed the bed sector, bed side of the course. I mean, uh, the black hat techniques. So now let's talk about how we can secure ourselves from this kind of attacks. 
So as I said, man in the middle attack works on the ARP poisoning, ARP spoofing, and what it means is the just manipulation of MAC addresses to trick the router that I am the user and for the user trick that I am the router. So this is the manipulation of MAC addresses. So in order to check whether there is uh, there is problems with your MAC addresses and there is someone uh, either whether someone is trying to do uh, trying to perform man in the middle attack there is a few steps you can perform first you can go on your windows operation systems uh, click start then type cmd so you will go to the terminal and you will type arp space uh, dash a so this is going to give the all MAC addresses that are currently connected to your a network so you can see we have the 10.0.2 so this is basically the same same net discover or net dot probe that we performed on Kali Linux so this is the same feature that we have here so you can see this is all IP addresses that are connected to our network uh, do not pay attention for the first and uh, sorry do not pay attention on the last uh, five six ones this is virtually created they are not related. The most important ones are the ones that start with 10, actually. Or if you are in real life, it can be 172 dot something or 192.168. So you pay attention to the ones that uh, match uh, the pattern with your IP address. So our IP address is 10.0. 10.0.2.4. Okay, and we have a sp we have a MAC address, right? Uh, and in order to check our MAC address, we'll write IP config. Okay. Oh, and yeah. Okay. So you can see that this is our IP address. This is our default gateway, and this is uh, our subnet mask. And there is a, another IP addresses. For example, 10.0.2.15. Uh, 10 this is actually an IP address of the Kali Linux operation system. And uh, right next to the IP address, there is uh, the physical address, which is same as MAC address. And you can see that this uh, device has a MAC address of 0800.27 before uh, 9403. Okay. Mm, it's not giving mu much for us. We are like, okay, this is the MAC address. But from the terminology and the theory part of networking classes we have learned, we know that physical addresses or IP addresses in the same network cannot be repeated. Okay, that's a good thing, but how we can implement it here? And if we pay more attention to the table we got, we can see that 10.0.2.1 has the same MAC address as 10.0.10.15. So what's happening? For the user, we are getting the trick that the, the, this specific IP address pretends that he is the router. So we have managed to find out that this specific IP address is the computer, is the workstation, is the operation system that is targeting on our computer and trying to hack us. So what we can do, we can either block this IP address or we can put an static IP table which will not allow anyone to choose, modify or create a new MAC address inside our network. So this is the first way. The second way that we can uh, find out who is targeting us is more if uh, is called uh, we are going to use a tool called XARP. Why is XARP better in a way uh, of performance than the terminal version we just showed you? Because uh, you never know who is who and when is going to attack you, right? So you are browsing and you just don't know. Uh, when you are going to be hacked. So you are not going to all the time check your terminal to see whether someone is hacking you or no. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy, right? It's not going to work like that. Maybe someone is targeting you at night. Maybe someone is going to target you after two minutes. What if you checked, have checked two minutes before, but the attack started five minutes after? So in order to avoid this and be more efficient, we can go to the Google and download a tool called XARP. In order to do that, you just go to the Google and type XARP. 
let me change the Google to English version so it will be more clear for you guys if some of you do not understand Arabic me myself I do not also I just got used to to use the Arabic version so we'll type here XR then we'll go to the first website we have oh yeah and let me turn off the man in the middle attack so you will see the clear difference uh, how our uh, how our software managed to detect the attack itself so in order to do you just type exit and clear here we go okay so let's download that application on our windows windows okay we'll wait for a while Yes, next, 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 next. Um, yeah, next, next, I agree. Automatically start. Yeah, you can put it to start automatically. It's a good recommended thing. So, okay, you can see that the XR managed to start, and you can see there is a very uh, easy interface, I would say. There is an, uh, uh, why? Because there is a uh, green. Uh, the green uh, thing there that shows that there is no ARP attacks. So if it's green, then it means, as this uh, as the caller suggests, <laughs> there is no ARP attacks. You can, uh, and here it shows the same thing that we saw in the CMD. You can see this is our IP address with our MAC address. Uh, this is IP address of the Kali Linux. Of course, we if we are a user, we do not know this is the Kali Linux. We do we. Uh, accept it as a uh, normal user, uh, as a user who has no uh, no thought of uh, hacking us because we don't know who is it. Uh, but we will talk about it a little bit later. Yeah. So this is the basic I, uh, table of IP addresses and MAC addresses. Here is the security level. Level we can put it either high or minimal. Uh, it's if you are an average user, it's uh, it's okay to put on a basic, but if you are too much uh, curious about your security, you can put high aggressive. There is other policies about it, but we are not interested in that ones now. We're interested in high and aggressive. Uh, sorry, <laughs> basic. Yeah. So we we leave it as it is. Okay. So we leave as the program install was installed by default. Now we can even uh, I think we can close it. Yeah, so it will be so it will be down anyways, even if we close it. Yeah, and we can continue our browsing. So we can go to Google. You can see even if I go to the Google Irish version, you can see it's uh, it's HTTPS running because we turned off the uh, downgrade. So now if I go to the my better cop again. and do the same thing uh, so basically start the attack down, go to, oops, for set ARP spoof full duplex to turn on the uh, bond between router hacker and the user um, yeah net dot probe on arp.spoof on oh you can see directly right as soon as i typed arp.spoof on as soon as i didn't even uh, manage to complete my attack but as soon as i typed the arp spoof on it directly detected that the change field the mac address for ip 10.0.2.1 which is our router changed from this MAC address to this MAC address. Why? Because the second MAC address we see is the MAC address of the hacker. And the first MAC address, which is 52540012350, is the real MAC address of the real MAC address of the router. But now the hacker tricked us to think that he is the router. So hence he has this MAC address. So also so we know that this is the MAC address and if we go to the tool we can see that this two 
these three are inter involved in the hacking process, involved in the ARP poisoning. So we can we can see it. this is the router. Router obviously cannot hack us, hack us because router is just a router, just a modem. Uh, this is us. We will not hack ourselves. So hence, this is the hacker. So we have to uh, we have to think about him, the disconnecting from the internet. Okay, so this is the detection process. Uh, you can, in case uh, you are working in a large company uh, and there is many employees, you don't know which one is exactly targeting your network. Uh, you cannot disconnect some people because you don't know whose computer is being used. So this is a way to specifically find the person who is hacking you and turn him off. But what if we are located at home and uh, or let's say uh, what if uh, a same example what if in a, we are in a big organization and we don't have an access to disconnect or connect someone uh, what if we don't have that access to the router to disconnect someone what if you are in an airport let's say or mall and someone you see is trying to hack you but you do not have access to the IT services to go to delay this person from internet to disconnect him uh, blah 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 and change the MAC address you do you cannot do this just because you are a normal user you don't have any authority you don't have any privileges so what's the procedure for you to defend yourself first uh, the first and the best solution is using a VPN. What a VPN does, I know many people use it to bypass some websites, but this is not the purpose of the VPN. VPN provides a secure tunnel between you and uh, the servers or the routers you are communicating with. It has a feature called IPsec, which provides IP security at the level of IP. It provides, in other words, in, or in one word, it would be just an encryption. So all the traffic you send and receive is going to be encrypted. So let's say uh, I have the Wireshark, right? If I go to the Wireshark, I can see that all your traffic is going. If I have a VPN, the same is going to happen. Same, I can see the traffic is going from, th from this place to that place. From This is happening, this is happening. But what's the thing about the VPN? Everything is encrypted. So even if I get the data, I cannot read it because it's gibberish. It's written in a language that uh, we cannot understand. We cannot crack it. We cannot do anything. So this is a, a very, very good uh, solution to implement a VPN. So it will keep you uh, very, very protected. And uh, uh, one more extra thing, and I think this is the last thing that I would like to mention is to put a, st a strong Wi-Fi uh, network password because as I said from the first uh, three parts of the uh, of the course is that um, the ha this method of hacking this attack uh, especially starts from Wi-Fi hacking so first the hacker manages to hack the Wi-Fi then he he or she gets inside your network and performs the manning the middle attack. So if you put a strong security on your Wi-Fi, strong secure password, and you do not allow any person you do not know personally, or you do not know uh, the manners and the thoughts of that person, you do not allow them to con connect to your network, you will be totally safe. So there is three uh, four, three solutions so far we covered. The VPN, strong Wi-Fi password, and the XARP and there are many tours is not limited only to XARP. XR. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the course. I hope you got uh, benefit from this course. Oh, again, someone is hacking us. <laughs> yeah, this is not me, guys. I don't know who is it. I'm going to know about it. Thank you very much. I hope you will do the right thing with the things I taught you. See you guys.